Welcome to the Real Estate Masters Podcast, where we interview the top names in the real estate game. If you want to grow your real estate business, see more podcasts, or get free resources, go to www.remcommunity.com, the only podcast that allows you to directly connect with the guests in many of the highest level names in the real estate game. You are in for a treat with our next guest. Do me a favor, subscribe to the podcast, leave us a review, and don't forget to go to remcommunity.com to connect with some of the highest level real estate professionals in the United States through our community and through our high level masterminds. Let's go. All right, welcome to today's show. We have Mr. Robert Seifert. He is an entrepreneur. I love having true entrepreneurs uh, on our show. He has built a lot of businesses through real estate. He's done, done up to a couple hundred deals a year in his real estate investing business. He's uh, transferred into doing software and all kinds of cool stuff we just got done talking about right before we jumped on here. So welcome, Robert. Thanks for coming on and love to hear all the stuff that you've got going on, man. Yeah, Tony, a pleasure. And thanks for having me on. Um, Likewise, it's always great to meet anyone with the entrepreneurial mindset because there's not many people that think like us, right? So it's cool to be able to rattle off things fast and we both get it. Um, instead of getting the blanks there, like, well, what are you talking about? <laughs> um, so yeah, you know, uh, born and raised in the Midwest in the Metro, Metro Detroit, Motor City area and started uh, wholesaling, you know, about I don't know, almost, almost eight years, seven or eight years ago now, um, full time, lots of studying before that. So I have the consummate story of uh, study, grew up the right way and just afraid to go into real estate, so to speak, until I said time, went all in and a couple hundred deals a year evolved into um, a couple different business lines, right? I've done wholesaling, I've done rehabbing, turnkey, property management, you name it. Uh, you know, over six, 700 doors through my own businesses and coached and mentored thousands of doors outside of that um, in all different facets of uh, rehabbing, exiting, turnkey, managing, and property management. Um, then got into software. I, I never intended to get into software. I was literally just solving a problem in my own business so that I could scale. I saw the leaky buckets. I knew the things that need to be dialed in and automated. And there really wasn't any technology at the time that I felt did it from a real estate person's perspective. Um, so, and I went into a mastermind where that was a shared thought, like, no, there's, you can't do that. How do you do that? And I had done it for my own business, right? So I spent a lot of money to build out a thing that was gonna allow us to scale rapidly and go after the thousand deals a year, you know, and plus. Um, and that never happened because I got finagled, I will say, uh, happy that it happened to me now, but finagled over the last few years to build software for other real estate investors who wanted to scale their business and solve the same problem. So it became a passion, right, over the last few years. That's it. And that's what realestateinvestor.com is, is just providing all the tools, software, services, um, coaching, the things that everyone needs when they get started and they're just out there looking for. So I want to cut off the learning curve that I spent doing and just get your right to doing deals, growing and scaling your business and, and doing it the right way, right? Getting operationally minded, thinking like a CEO and an entrepreneur so you can go do and enjoy life. Like I, I remember reading in your bio, you only spend like maybe five hours a week on your actual real estate business, mm-hmm. right? Which that's, that's kind of how I am too. So I, I love being able to go do other things, which and I know you're an entrepreneur just that opens the door to all the other possibilities that you can go and venture into now and apply that same thing. Yeah, it's interesting. Most companies, I want to say most companies, but a lot of successful companies started somewhere and they either failed at their first thing or several things and ended up getting to something that's really successful or being successful in one thing and taking that success and, and building other things. So, um, you know, mm-hmm people think that when they get into real estate, that, that like, that's like the end game. And typically it's not, right? It's like, there's something else, greater, bigger, better, more purpose, whatever it is that, that you shift into. So yours was a need for um, helping other, your, your business to start off. And then you realize you could help other businesses as well. So tell us about that transition, because that's, that's a big transition. Um, you know, what was that like? Was it scary? Was it exciting? Was it all the above? And, and how did you shift and adapt to that? Because starting a whole new business, like I start new businesses now and it's a lot easier than when I started my second business and it was a you know, whole new thing. Going mm-hmm. out. So tell us about that transition and, and uh, what you learned from that. 
Yes, let's start with it's absolutely all of the above. It's scary, it's exciting, it's uh, gets the adrenaline pumping, right? And I love to start things up, so that's the easy part. Um, and taking a step back from that and then answering your question, uh, true, I actually have had bunch of failures on the way, right? Um, that led up to me even getting into real estate, which I think kept me gun shy of getting into real estate because I had failed at other entrepreneurial attempts, right? Got, got so far and then it imploded and crashed um, and took all those learning lessons, got into real estate. And then as I did that, the first thing that made me a little bit more comfortable with what was scary was taking on building a property management business, right? But it was similar. It was just, it was just making sure that I was catering to my clients and building the relationships all the way through and not handing it off to someone else. So that one was less scary. Um, it was more facilitated need. The software shift though was massive, right? That was scary, nervous. I spent months um, really debating that, no, this is, I'm not going to do this. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not writing a check to go do that. It's a whole other thing I don't understand. Um, I'd have to learn and develop. Um, and then finally there was, I would say there was two things that helped me shift. Um, number one, I'm, I'm a big believer in faith. So divinely, I just felt this calling that said, look, this, I didn't bring you into real estate to do real estate, which is the only reason I got into real estate. I thought that was it. This is the end for me. I'm just going to do real estate and enjoy my life. And then I just felt this compelling call that, look, you have all these people telling you this is a problem. You have the thing to solve it. That's why you're here. So you have to go do this. Then it helped that I flew out to San Diego, sat down with my developer and another developer that explained, um, it, got, it got me a little tutorial in what software means and MRR and all these fancy terms, but essentially, hey, this is what the end picture looks like. This is an exit of a business and it can be massive in software. And I was like, wow, so I can help thousands and millions of people and I can also profit my family in a way I never even considered before. So the two combined made a whole lot of excitement and again, super scary, but I've been there before, right? Like I've written the checks for coaches in the past, which were scary. Um, but I learned from those previous endeavors and what helped me shift this time was, you know, I, I, I and now I live more by a model, right? If I, if it's something I'm afraid of, that's absolutely what I'm probably called to do. Um, so I, I faced that fear right in its face and I wrote the big check to start the company and then it became a spiraling event. So it, it's been a shift and shift leading up to even this year, moving forward with things we're going into 2021. Um, what I found is just like you though, I've, now I can, I can, uh, instead of it taking me months or weeks to harness that scare and excitement and things, I'm, I'm pretty good about being able to focus on that right away and, um, being able to go right into it. But I've also learned a lot along the way. Right. So I think Facing your fears at every endeavor helps you build experiences that you can do that, that allow you to do it more and more and more. Mm -hmm. And would you, I'm sure you're this way too. So like for my first business is real estate investing. That's what my core business is. I still do that. I still, you know, love it to a point and it helps people, you know, it helps sellers. It helps, you know, buyers get into nice homes. We do, we, we have a good staff. So there's, there's some fulfillment in that, but it's limited, Right. So for you, like the software business, now you're, you're influencing hundreds, thousands, potentially millions of people with that software. And so anything that I do now, it seems like it's, it kind of needs to be the same way. It's like, I need to feel more fulfilled doing it. I need to help people and it needs to, it needs to feel good at the end of the day. Not saying real estate investing doesn't, but you know, there's things in that business yeah. that just aren't, don't feel good dealing with, you know, bad contractors and deals oh, yeah. and stuff like that. But like, you know, so, um, I guess, and the other thing is, is that I had, like, I've had failures too. Like people think that, you know, people are running these businesses like you and I, and it's like, it, it's all rosy and all that kind of stuff, but there's so many downs that have come with it. And the first mm -hmm. year that I tried kind of a real second business, I well over a hundred thousand dollars into it and I got nothing back. Right. But I look at that and I go, okay, there's a lot of things from that, that I was able to learn from and build. And now like I'm making really good money on those things and it's built good relationships and I'm helping people and all that kind of stuff. So, um, I don't know, I guess you probably feel the same way where even the failures that you had probably were good learning lessons to where you could take them into life and business and build off of them. And eventually there was probably something that in there that came good out of it. Yeah. I, I like, um, I forgot who gave the speech, but I think it was, um, 
um, I'm going to forget, but it was a big speech that kind of nailed this, right? And it was like, it, you may not see things in the moment. I, I, uh, one, I love to live by a sail forward fast because there are lessons within failures. Mm -hmm. um, that comes from Mark Devine, uh, Navy SEAL coach, right? But the, the other one that I love is that you can look backwards and connect the dots, right? And so, and, and you can't do that moving forward because moving forward, you just know where you want to go, but you have, you know, and, and things in the moment tend to feel horrible and I made mistakes and I did so bad. The reality is, and what I've come to learn is that everything is a learning process. So yeah, those, those failures, quote unquote failures are lessons. There's something I was supposed to learn in that. And, and I would say, I think that sometimes we repeat those failures until we actually focus on what was the lesson, right? Um, and that's the connecting the dots. Like, man, if I wouldn't have failed at that, I may have never gotten here because I wouldn't have been developed as a person to be able to do that. Um, so I think that all of those dots throughout our life are something that are preparing us for where we're at and where we're headed. Um, the, there was something else you said that I wanted to touch on that was awesome. So it's, it's absolutely that. And then, yeah, so real estate was it. Like I got into real estate and I thought it was it because you're right. I, I, hey, I, I'm, I'm solving way more problems than before. It's not a one-to-one. -one. I'm literally helping sellers, buyers, and tenants, right? So I'm helping three different families all in this situation. And then as I started to grow, it's like, oh, I'm helping my team members and they're becoming extended families. And then, yeah, the, the, the call went beyond that when I realized, well, man, software is not just, it's, it's, it's still real estate, so I still have a passion for real estate, and I love being around real estate. Um, but now I, I recognize that I can influence and impact millions of people because I still get to impact not only the sellers, buyers, tenants that our team is capable of doing, but now I'm impacting all these other thousands of teams that also are impacting those people below them. So if I help make them better, every experience those other relationships have is better as a as a byproduct. So that was like a big part of that calling of, no, you're going to help way more people than you thought. Um, and so it doesn't just have to be you. So yeah. It's, and I, and I tend to notice the things that I'm interested in and I have a couple of little startups I'm working on right now are how can I help people in other ways? What, are, what other things can I do that are, that are still going to support and help them, right? How can they work better? How can they live better? How can they be healthier? Um, you know, and th those kind of things. So, and those are all lessons from what I've learned and applying it. And I, I and it doesn't mean that I, I'm going to go, like I started a, a side business project um, on the side right now, and I've already, I think, dumped over 20000 into it and said, I haven't made anything. All right, let me take a step back and uh, reevaluate re how I went into this. And, and now we're like totally pivoting it and figured out, okay, this, this is what I forgot to put in there. I've learned enough to now let's dial it in. It will be able to help people now and eventually it'll return. But, you know, I give that one a year before it returns anything. But that's the intent. It's going to give a lot first. I missed that piece when I started it. Yeah, I think for, for beginning investors, they are afraid to jump in sometimes and, and, and fail. And it's going to happen, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of investors I see jump into their first deal and they either, you know, make very little. They think they're going to make this, they make this, or, or even lose money on it. And then a lot of them get out of the game. You know, that's just, that's just the nature of the beast. But those that stick with it, try a second deal, try a third deal keep going, you're going to figure out things, right? You're going to figure out what you, like you said, connect the dots. You're going to figure out what you did wrong in the first deal. Second deal, it's going to be a lot easier. Third deal. And now like for, for, you know, my team, hundreds of deals later, it's like we figured out so much that we're not perfect by any means, but we've been through so many like lessons and mistakes and things like that, that now we just don't make nearly as many. And uh, it just makes it a lot easier. So sometimes you just have to dive in. You got to fail. You got to fail fast, like you said, and, and, uh, and just keep going and find your way. You know, real estate could be the end game for some. Some people are, just want to be in real estate. They want to meet with buyers. They want to meet with sellers. That's their deal. And that's, that's what they do. And they do it great. And I think that's, that's awesome. And then there's people like you and I that just, for some reason, we were crazy and we want to just build a hundred different things, in it, you know, at the same time. Yep. Um, and there's good and bad to both, right? So I think what it comes down to is focusing on one thing, doing it well, and then either do it well and get it systemized, then move on to the next thing. Or if you get into it and you realize you've got to pivot and it's not the thing you need to do, there's probably something close to it that, it, you know, you can pivot to. Like, for instance, I, I did um, in-person masterminds for... Uh, probably about a year and a half. And I realized it was a lot of time. It was traveling. I started having a baby and things like that. And honestly, I didn't make any money. I built great relationships, helped a lot of businesses, didn't make a lot of money on it. 
But now with, you know, all this virtual stuff going on, now I put it into virtual masterminds and now I'm reaching way more people, way faster, don't have to travel. So even though that time of year and a half didn't really make much, it like allowed me to realize that I can still impact people, but in a different way. And now I can scale that business so much faster. So, but uh, yeah, yeah, totally. so tell, yeah, so tell us more, uh, more about, I guess, just the business aspect of itself, right? So for me, I love talking about automation. I love talking about building teams because that's something that real estate investors have a tough time doing. Even with their first deal, they may have a trouble finding a contract, a good contractor, a good realtor. And then, you know, even if they find all those and they start growing the business, they have a tough time building the team. So you have a lot of things going on, like a lot of successful entrepreneurs. How do you juggle all that? How do you manage it? Do you feel like it's time management? Do you feel like it's your team, like combination? Like, tell us a little bit about how you manage all that and still create a balanced life, if you have a balanced life. Uh, it's a work in progress. Always, I think, will be, and I'm getting better and better at that. Um, I, I would say a couple I've done this year that have really helped a lot is number one is all starts with you, right? If you don't focus on you, you are the center of all of those things. Those other things might just be bad as a result of if you have chaos, those around you are going to have chaos. If you're if you become balanced and calmed and centered, generally you're going to meet and and create an environment that does that. So I, I've learned over the years that instead of I, I was focusing on all the outside things and really it, it's all come back to especially this year I got hit hard with it's it's you. You're, you're at the center of all of this, right? So I did 75 hard, um, really to develop two things. It was cool because I, I love the story behind it being a mental challenge, and it was. It's why I'm a great uh, entrepreneur and why we do it, because it goes back to what you just said in the beginning. Most people go in, they might do a deal, it didn't work out right, and then they quit, this isn't for me. But they didn't have the grit or perseverance that it takes to be an entrepreneur in anything. So number one, that's it, hey, you did it. Do you know how many people, like I spent a decade studying every book there was, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, went to the seminars, paid for the classes, and was just so afraid to make a mistake. I can tell you that once I got rid of all that garbage in my head and went into doing my first deal, the first deal sucked. I only made like 500 bucks. I was supposed to make 10,000, totally messed it up. I should have quit at that point if I was one of those people. But I also said, man, all the book taught me was a whole bunch of language. The reality of doing a deal taught me more than any of the 10 years of study that I had about real estate. And so then, and then to your point, the next deal got a little easier and I made a little bit more of the next deal. And then wow, it just started to spiral and had a momentum, but it all comes back to, I had perseverance and grit to just, it's okay if it sucks in the beginning, everything you do in the beginning, the first time is going to suck until you get better at it. It doesn't matter what it is, play a sport. You have to continue to do it and build experience. Um, so in business, taking that lesson. Number one, it all comes back to you, right? Once you start working on you, so I have, a, I have a morning routine, right? I'm a big, don't check my phone in the morning, don't look at email, don't look at social media. I, what do I wanna accomplish at least in the first hour of the day? Some sort of exercise, some sort of reading or journaling or meditation, something that is good for me, my body, my soul. And then the rest of the day seems to become easier. If I mess up and don't do that in the morning, I'm on somebody else's path, not mine. Um, from there, it's getting everything organized, right? So that it's not chaotically all over the place. And it could be as simple as putting it all on a spreadsheet or all on a whiteboard. What are you working on, right? So my, my first business mentor taught me how to use seven whiteboards to run my whole business, buying houses, rehabbing houses, selling houses, contracts, and money in the bank. It was very organized. From there, to your point, you, to scale that. So that's number one. Like you've got to get organized. Use a, I don't care if you use a yellow pad. Keep track of the notes of the conversations you're having and then have the next one, right? And keep track of that. Then it's follow-up. This, If you're in this for the long game, which you should be, the long game is building relationships. And to build relationships, you have to foster those over time. So that's easy to do one-to-one -one physical masterminds in the beginning when it's just a handful. As that starts to scale out, you're doing more deals, you have more contractors, more sellers, more buyers, more agents you're working with. Automation is the key of that to me, right? And so then automation, what can I automate that is redundant? Like if I'm going to send a text to say, hi, how you doing today? Hey, I got another deal potentially for you. Um, hey, Mr. Agent, you got anything for me that's off market, right? Relationship driven. 
I can automate all my text messages. I can automate my phone calls with the technology that's out there today. I can automate emails getting sent out. I can't even automate thank you postcards and cards just getting met in the mail. All these things are personal touches that make the person on the other end feel cared about and, and that you care about the relationship, right? But it also allows you the free time that if that's automatically happening, well, all those people aren't going to reply back, right? They just, they just like that you touch them when they're ready or they have something or they want to take the next step, they will. That's the only time you should be spending on that. Now, taking that to your point, as that continues to scale, and so that works when you got the, you know, tens of contacts into the hundreds and automation helps get all of that off your plate. And, and now you still don't have to hire and spend money. I don't have to have overhead. I could, depending on what I'm good at. And I would argue that you should have some sort of assistant to do all the stuff you hate to do. Um, that'd be my first hire. From there, though, you get to the hundreds and thousands of those happening. And now you need a team. Like, you're not going to get further without a team. I, you could be the hustler extraordinaire and burn yourself out. I've done that. <laughs> and, and that leads to no balance we all and no have. family life. Yeah, that leads to vacations on my cell phone and checking my email and my wife saying, I thought we were on vacation, uh, right? And I'm, I've been through all that. Um, so the next step is scale and hiring people. And, and most of us don't, don't trust, right? So as far as real estate investings go, we, we've built in that. Because what's the next thing you need? You, again, you need to continue to hire for the things you don't like to do first and foremost. So if, if you hate talking to sellers, well, then you should probably hire someone to do that. If you enjoy it, then you should talk to, to, to you should hire someone that's going to talk to all those people until they're ready to do something, to have an in-person meeting or set the stage of qualifying them to the point that it fits into what you like to do, right? And, that, and that's the next level of hiring. And then eventually, if you're like us and you want to go do other things, well, then you got to replace yourself in that stuff too and start getting all the people running all the systems and automation that are in place so that you can just step back, look at nothing but KPIs and metrics that run the business or any business really and then step out and do other things that you might enjoy. But again, I, I'll come back to the one thing you said too, because it's the key. You can't do any of what we just said about going out and doing all these other things unless you focus on one thing first and dial it in immensely to, to the point that it could be handed off. Anybody could run it. It's systematized and you just plug in the right people and manage the people. Until that point happens, shouldn't be going to do something else, learning another way Right. There's a hundred things you could do in real estate alone and you shouldn't be doing all of them because you're not going to get to that level of success unless you just pick one and go all in. Then pick the number two once you've gotten that. Then you can go on to number three and it could be all real estate lines to your business or something else you're passionate about. I feel like you've listened to all of our previous podcasts because everything you talked about, I feel like we've touched on some of that in all of our podcasts previously. I mean, but I think, I think the biggest thing you said that most people don't, and may, it's a, becoming a little more common now talking about it, but really it's, it's working on yourself because you could have, you could be doing millions of dollars worth of business. You could have a hundred employees, you can have all these things, but if you're not balanced and centered and not happy and not feeling good and not energetic, there's going to be a point where you're going to break down people are going to feel it. You're going to falter. Your health is going to go down. And there's just a lot of different mm -hmm. things that can happen with it. And I love the morning routine thing that you said. We've, we've talked, I think I've talked about that at least a few times on different podcasts. Um, and that's, you know, people, when they wake up in the morning, they get on their cell phones, they start Facebooking or tweeting or checking emails and all that. And all of a sudden it's like, you get this influx of information that's just clogging your mind. Like you just, it's so much harder to focus. And I used to be that way for several, several years until I, I oh, learned yeah. the morning routine. And I still falter every once in a while, you know, I'll go on a walk in the morning, check my emails just cause I need to clear some stuff out. Mm -hmm. But most of the time I try to not check emails until I get into the office. And that way I can center myself. I can visualize the day. And the thing that most people don't realize is that you could be, one really just one good decision away from taking your life and your business in a different direction. You know, whether that's, you know, you talk about building relationships, you could meet that person that, you know, maybe you wouldn't have met had you not just stepped back and said, Hey, I need to find someone good for whatever it is, a marketing plan or something like that. Um, there's so much time. And, and there's, I think there's a book on it that, that says that, um, they studied for every minute that you plan up to a certain point, of course, if you plan all day, then you're not going to get anything done. But most of the time when you plan something, you get that time back about two to th two to three times in return. 
So for every minute you plan, you get about three times in return because you do it more effectively, you do it more efficiently, you think through it better um, instead of just diving in and, and, and just going 100 miles an hour like a lot of, a lot of people do. So I think that was really important. That was, um, that was, that was good, uh, good thoughts there. So what's next for you? Like, you know, you've got all of these things going on. Do you, I know even a year from now can be way different. Like for me, it's like last year was way different than even this time this year. There's so many different cool things going on that I've, that I've, you know, jumped into. Do you kind of have a little bit of a vision of where you want to end this? Like, do you, like for some people it's build it and then sell it and make, you know, millions or tens of millions or whatever the number is and just retire and whatever. Um, I have a feeling you're going to say you're not going to do that because you want to, you know, want to continue to work and build for the rest of your life. But I don't know. What does it look like for you kind of five, 10, 15, even 20 years down the road? Do you know? Who? Uh, yeah, I know some of that. Um, I, I'm the big, you know, 20, down, 20 years down the road. I just know it'll be completely different than anything I could imagine today. Right. So it's hard for me to look out that far. Um, but I, but I still like to have those pie in the sky dreams um, and they'll change over time. Right. So definitely over the next year, it's really, I think we've got a lot of things dialed in and running and operating. Um, and I'm opening up a couple, a couple other lines that for me, it's, you know, what I'm doing is I'm taking what I'm applying to myself right now and getting centered and balanced and, and fixing those holes of, Hey, how, how can I have it all? How can I have a healthy lifestyle while building wealth and have amazing relationships at home with the people most important to me and then those around me? And I believe you can have it all. Um, and so I'm a, that's my path, right? And so I've, I've spent a lot of time on getting all my time back over the last couple of years. And now I feel like I'm in a really good place that I can, I can clearly see the work I just need to do daily to make sure that starts to get cemented as a new habit, pattern, and result. Um, I, I envision over the next five years, maybe somewhere between the next five and 10 years, there's a big potential um, with where we're headed. So the focus over the next year is we're, we, we got a couple other very big plans with real estate investor.com and problems we're going to really solve for people in a way that no one's ever done in our industry, which is our vision, right? We want to help millions of people and there are millions in real estate alone. So it starts there. And so we're number one, this next year to three years is massive growth focused. How do, how do more people know about us and, and therefore allow us to impact their lives? Um, so that's the main focus there. Um, definitely can see over the next five to 10 years that there being an exit um, potentially as we develop this amazing platform within the real estate space. There's probably someone way bigger than us that is going to love the way we've perfectly dialed this in, that they're just going to want to take it and replace whatever they, ha they have. So we definitely see that. That's the, that's the company in my vision with that company. Um, but to your point, it doesn't matter what that check is. I'm, I'm very aware of the fact that it isn't going to stop, that I'm going to continue to do something else and I'm going to continue to think. So at the same time, being aware of that, what I've done recently is started to develop my own, my own personal platform. Like, yeah, I'm on social media, but I've actually put a concentrated effort and some money behind making sure that my personal platform continues to grow along with the real estate side. So that if something opens up, like I told you about the health part, while I'm launching a, and it was because I was trying to do it live, figure it out virtual. I figured out a whole virtual way to do it to help people and impact more people. That's going to grow. And, it's, and I don't envision exiting that. That's just something. It's a passion project. It's, I believe everything comes down to our health. which starts in our mind. And so I, I want to help people along the journey I've taken this last year that has totally changed my whole life upside down. And then I, I think that I'll get more into the um, – you know, what other things can you do as an entrepreneur on the person? So I think I'm, I'm personally moving forward, going to be very much more focused on how can I, how can I help you set, set up the step by steps to have starting in your health and your relationships that will then build out into your wealth, right? And so I'm really centered on that. And then the businesses that I'm involved in are uh, going to definitely continue to do that. So I, I can see over the, you know, 20 years from now, I'll just be, I'll be a totally different person than I am today. Um, I will look back on this person and be able to say, man, I, I thought I was super powerful and inspiring and influencing people in an amazing way. And I'm 10 times that now. And that guy is just a weak version of who I am. And so that's my vision for myself and the companies that I'm surrounded with. And, and then we'll see where it all goes. 
Good stuff, man. I'm, I'm looking forward to the future and it sounds like you are too, because things change so much yeah. even just in a year, but I can only imagine five, 10, 15, 20 years from now, what, what we'll be doing and creating. And a lot of people say, you know, man, if I just got a check written for X amount of dollars, I'd be out of it. And in the beginning, that's kind of your, like what you're thinking. Like I want yeah. to hit a monetary goal. I want, and then all of a sudden it's like, you start hitting those goals and you realize that's not it. Like there's something else. It's, you know, for me, I just, I just get, I get more of a high, like obviously the big checks that come in, those are great. Right. But at some point you get a little yeah. kind of numb to those in a way. And then all of a sudden it's like the things that really fulfill you more, you realize are at home, obviously with, you know, family and that kind of thing. But then just the impact you make, you know, with, you know, for me, it's like, if I can help business owners make less mistakes than I made by giving them resources and introducing them to masterminds, providing additional funding for them, coaching them, uh, this podcast, inspiring people to do something that they normally wouldn't have done to me, that's where, that's where it all is. And that's, that's the big fulfillment. And then when you do that and you make more impact, the money's going to come, you know, people think it's the other way around. You, you make the money and then you go make an impact. It's like make an impact now. And then that money will come somehow, you know? So that's my, that's my soapbox. Totally agree. We're going to wrap it up here. Um, great stuff, man. I, I really look forward to reconnecting again. This is our first time actually uh, meeting. I know we kind of know of each other and have, you know, been in the same circles yeah. and stuff like that. But just to wrap it up, looking back, and you, you, I think you just said a little bit ago that, you know, down the road, you're going to look at your previous self and say, man, I was a much different person than I am now. So looking back, looking backwards, um, and kind of connecting the dots, are there some key things that you that like maybe mistakes that you made, or even something good that you did in the past that you'd want to share that would help? help our listeners with their journey in uh, real estate or business? Yeah, I think one of my, my two biggest lessons um, from before that have helped catapult getting to where I am today is I spent, and, and hopefully this will help anyone who needs to hear this, not spend so much time overthinking, um, making that first step, right? Whatever that is for you. Uh, for me, it was, I, I spent a decade literally wanting to do real estate but afraid to do it um and it once i did it it was like why why, why did i wait 10 years right so like the big lesson and, and i try to apply that in everything so now i live by a model called faith over fear um and it's just simply i just have to have faith that if i take a step against my fear it's going to work out it, it may not i may fail but it may be the exact lesson i needed to learn to get me to the next step and so i believe that and now i wish I could, I could go back and tell my younger self that, and I have a about to be three-year-old, that's exactly what I'm teaching him now. Like, you want to jump off that, I don't care. Never, never be afraid you could do anything. So definitely face your fears is a huge lesson. And then the next biggest one um, that I'm actually being reminded of now, when I first got started in real estate, I read a great book called Magic by Rhonda Byrne. And it's, she's actually the creator of what more people would probably know, The Secret. And so she wrote this book because it's the secret behind the secret. Mm -hmm. And it, I can tell you, catapulted our business, our life, everything rapidly changed. And it's really, it's nothing more than a focus on gratitude. And now that I'm focusing back on self, I'm being reminded of that I'm being called. There's things that are coming up to say, I got to go back to that thing that you gave, gave away over 50 books because it was so powerful. Why'd you stop doing that? Right. And so now I'm reminded that gratitude, just Every day, no matter where you are in your life, you have something to be grateful for. First of all, if you're listening to this, you have a phone or you have internet or you have something that even allows you that ability. You have electricity. You know how many people that don't have any of that? So you have something to be grateful. You're grateful that you're alive, grateful that your blood is pumping, you can breathe the air, right? So we a focus on gratitude and facing our fears are the two biggest lessons that will continue to spiral into the next version of who I'm going to be. And I forgot, I wanted to mention something because you, you talked about uh, the planning and, and changing. There's an awesome motto I, I love to live by, and I, I have people that help plan, right? But the seven P's the Navy SEALs live by, uh, proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance because mm. it changes everything. Yeah, yeah. But just like you said, remember, there is analysis paralysis too. Sometimes you have to jump in and learn, and so there's that – there's that yeah, fine yeah. line between planning too much and not taking action. So you, you'll, you'll find yeah, ready, that. Ready, you'll figure ready, that ready, fire. What's that? Yep. It's a, a ready, fire, aim. 
Yep, that's, that's the way I am. Yep. Totally, totally. Yep. Well, cool. It was good connecting, man. It was good to seeing all the stuff you've got going on. I look forward to reconnecting. Uh, we'll put a link down below. Um, Robert also has a, what'd you call it, a marketplace for real estate investors that you're um, kind of have together, getting ready to launch that has a lot of cool tools and resources and things like that for real estate investors. So we'll put a, a link below for that and uh, appreciate it, Robert. And hopefully yeah. the uh, listeners got some good stuff for you, from you, which I know they did because I did too. And uh, we'll look forward to uh, connecting soon. Awesome. Thanks, Tony. It was a pleasure. Yeah, me too. Have a good one. Thanks for listening. Now go to www.remcommunity.com to connect with today's guest, see our high-level masterminds, and to get free resources. Don't forget to share this with a friend and leave us a five-star review. We'll see you on the next episode.